welcome to 2023 with Agnes Kunkel. In 2020, the world was hit by COVID-19. It was like a time machine. Find out what the world might look like in spring 2023 and how we will need to adapt. 2023, your window to a world beyond COVID-19. As always, on Fridays, Xenia uses the Let's Work co-working spaces in the city to work from. She enjoys being surrounded by other professionals to have coffee breaks, or to at least not be disturbed at home by the kids and Thomas, her husband. While she is standing at the coffee machine in the kitchen of the building, her friend Anna starts to tell her how stressed she was the day before, with online meetings all day and her family at home being noisy in the background. Oh yes, Anna, let me tell you a story, Xenia immediately says. She starts sharing her experience from that one day in March, back in 2020. The pandemic had just started, and it was her second week in her home office. While she was hiding from the rest of her family in the bedroom, she was scrolling through her email inbox. One email caught her attention. The title stated, Your office is contaminated by coronavirus. Another of your colleagues infected. Xenia immediately felt anxious and was worried about her and her family's health. She did not think twice. Xenia opened the email and clicked on the attached link to get more information. But suddenly, her computer turned black and a pirate skull popped up on the screen. In that moment, she realized she had become a victim of these phishing scams she had heard so much about when the pandemic started. After she had calmed down, Xenia called the security helpline from her company to report the case. Fortunately, her colleague on the helpline revealed to her that the phishing email was only a test from her company to raise awareness among the staff. The laptop was functioning normally once again, after an hour. And after all that, Anna, listen to what topped the day off. In the afternoon, I was on a video conference and not muted. We started to discuss the numbers of the month with my team, when suddenly, Thomas opened the door to our bedroom and screamed in excitement for everyone to hear. Darling, can you imagine? I finally got toilet paper in the supermarket. After Xenia and Anna had a good laugh, back in the co-working office, Xenia opens her laptop and starts scrolling through her emails, thinking to herself how grateful she is for having a secure internet connection and an optimal working environment here at Let's Work. Hello, I'm Agnes Kunkel, your host in 2023, your window to the world beyond COVID-19. Today, we are just about hitting 24.2 million confirmed cases worldwide and over 826,000 people have been confirmed to have died from COVID-19. It's so sad to hear from episode to episode that these figures are still so dramatically rising. But the curve of new daily infections seem now to fall slightly and we are still below 300 cases per day. What will happen during the next month, especially here in the Northern Hemisphere where people tend to stay more inside? Today we have 27th of August 2020. Our guest is James Fair the Senior Vice President of Technical Operations at Executech. Executech is a leading IT service provider, fast growing as I understand, in your area in the West and Midwest. And uh, you have been for many, many years in the industry and you have seen, I guess, a lot, but I guess you haven't seen anything like COVID-19. James, welcome here in our podcast. We are happy to have you here with us to talk about remote work and the technical side of security and so on. Uh, in this springtime, nearly half the world moved to home office very unexpectedly. What did this mean for your company? Thank you, Agnes. First of all, it's, I'm a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, and thank you to your audience. Uh, for us, it was actually, briefly at least, it was a huge boom. Um, most of our world certainly wanted to move to a work-from-home environment, so there was a massive scramble to to buy laptops, to buy webcams, uh, to buy headsets, and to get VPN licenses so they could connect securely to their work environments. So we, we had a huge upturn in the amount of work. Everyone was scrambling and busy, and, and everyone kind of looked like deer in headlights for a little while. They were, you know, in just panic mode. Um, 
So yeah, it was actually a big boom for us for quite a while. You managed to have the people to manage the boom. Uh, we did. Um, so Executech runs, we have two different models. We have the traditional remote support model, and we also have an on-site group. Um, so we were able to make the shift fairly well. We had a model of remote fo fo people that kind of showed us what to do and how to do it well. Um, you know, was it stressful? Yeah, absolutely. Um, most of the staff was having to leave their home. We had people working from home suddenly. We had children at home suddenly. Um, you know, and that's both a blessing and a curse for a lot of people, as I'm sure you know. Uh, I guess it was really hard to handle this, uh, maybe a boom and staying at home at the same time. <laughs> I, I think so, yeah, there was a lot of stress. Um, I, I Now that I'm older, my kids are adults, right? But we, got, we have a puppy. Um, Supposed to be my wife's dog, but she and I totally bonded. So now I've got this tiny doggy with me. And actually, a few months before the pandemic hit, I'd, I'd been kind of feeling guilty about leaving the house. She has this this really sad look on her face and makes me feel guilty when I leave. And, and I love coming home, right, to her because she was super excited to see me and she'd run around. And, and, and no one else in my household, you know, treats me that way when I get home. Um, but I, I was so excited about leaving. And I thought, I wish I could just work from home. Mm -hmm. And... And then I suddenly got my wish in a really big way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I discovered that there are some challenges from working from home, right? Mm -hmm. I have, she's always wanting to play. She's bothering me all the time going, <laughs> Damn, let's go play, let's go play. My wife walked by and want to have a conversation. I'm in the middle of a, of a webinar, for instance. Uh, and she's very understanding of a workload, but still, there's, it's tough to kind of juggle all this. And that's, and that's just without children. Uh -huh. um, my son and daughter-in-law and their two kids live below us. And I've watched them. And they struggled a lot. Uh, it was tough for them to have children at home, to be working at home and trying to juggle all those things at the same time. Um, so I think we've seen people adjust now. Uh, a lot of people, I think, are seeing, are feeling better about it or getting more used to this new routine. You know, humans are very resilient. Um, and it didn't take long before the, the staff really adjusted, both at well, my home life and the staff that I manage at work as well. It's just as you say, just as you say, I heard in another interview that people is very resilient and that they can adapt very quickly. And when it's the motto, you have to go and to stay at home, then we stay at home and manage it, manage it some way. And we have to go to the office again, we will manage it too. Uh, from, from the, now from your expertise uh, and from the uh, IT support side, Uh, had you been happy that your clients moved to so much uh, remote work uh, and uh, isn't it uh, uh, risk um, is it risky just to go to a yeah a living room a kitchen or or whatever maybe unsecure wifi or whatever that must be a nightmare <laughs> Yeah, there are definitely some security challenges that came with that. You know, uh, most people at home aren't going to spend a lot of money on a on a new modern firewall. You know, we call it a uh, a deep packet inspecting type firewall that's going to look at all the packets go in and out. They're usually using whatever their internet provider is providing, um, and their home computers typically aren't set up nearly as securely. They may not want to spend the money for an expensive antivirus program like your corporations or organizations would. Um, and and although it's not very common in homes, uh, theft could be an issue, right? So if I'm saving client data to my home computer and my home computer gets stolen, that data is now accessible, whereas most corporations and organizations will, will encrypt the hard drive to prevent that kind of thing. Um, and as you'd mentioned, uh, wireless is a big challenge, right? Uh, wireless is not secure. And traditionally, It's not set up by technical people at your home, which means it's set up however the home user, you know, their level of experience and not much beyond that. So let's come back to the nightmare. You said uh, that this was in some way a nightmare for people working in the security of IT. 
Yeah. So, you know, if your job is to make sure that the staff of your organization is always secure or as secure as possible, how do you do that when they're not at the office? How do you do that when they're at home um, on a computer that's potentially used by other people? Right uh, now, I may trust the employee to be safe, but how do I know that person's spouse or their children who also use the computer are going to practice those same safe habits? So it it has become a big challenge for security people to try to ensure some or a pro, you know an approximate level of security that existed before we all went home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, are there new tools, new ideas to secure uh, this level of security you need for a company? We haven't seen anything necessarily new that addresses this just yet. I'm sure there will be. Uh, that's going to be an, a huge market. I, I don't doubt that... Uh, Many of those mar many of those products will start coming out. I'm sure it's going to be a huge market. For now, it's a bit of a scramble to try to get us somewhere near there. And then there's the challenge of, is it okay for me to put my tools on your home computer, right? Is there um, legal ramifications yeah. to yeah. doing that? It's left to consider. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be very challenging. can be very challenging. I understand. And um, was there maybe a trade-off between bringing... The let, bringing the people uh, or to go on with the work and maybe to be not so secure? Uh, unfortunately, security and ease of use are really at opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, um, the most secure computer in the world is the one sitting in the middle of the room, unplugged with no wires attached. But it's very unusable. <laughs> so I want to try to find a balance between uh, what's easy for people to use and what's m more secure. And we see that as we... You know, security is all about layers, right? The more layers I can put in place, the more effort it will require the attacker to get through in order to in order to be effective. So, for instance, multi-factor authentication. We've we've hopefully everyone is using that. If you're not, I would certainly recommend everyone doing that. It's a fairly quick and easy mm -hmm. uh, layer of security that provides not just a username and password anymore, but one more layer. Mm -hmm. But it requires you know someone to pick up their phone or look at an app or do something else. So it's an additional layer. So how do we how do we balance that? Um, more security and still make it easier for the user without being cumbersome. Because if you make it too cumbersome, they will simply bypass it. They'll stop using it. They'll find a way around it. They'll they'll circumvent your security. Mm -hmm. So it is it's very much a juggling act. And yeah, we had to get people to work. So in a lot of cases, it was like, look, just go home, go to work, and we're going to try to figure this out as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, did it work well uh, that your clients uh, maybe didn't... Uh, Get, didn't ha get harmed in some way or or did you ha see some problematic issues where people where, where companies had problems arising from that easy going i would say generally we've been very successful um there was a, a, an awareness change as well people realize this is a, an issue so i think some of the awareness increased and people were more sensitive around that um didn't have a whole lot of incidents other than You know, if someone goes home and now they have technical challenges, well, they may not be anywhere near the office. So I, I can't really help you plug in your printer remotely. And I can't, mm. you know, some of these physical challenges, uh, wireless isn't as fast as wired. So mm. connection may be slower. Um, but overall, I would say that the scramble from from all IS, from all MSPs, not just us, to get people working from home was pretty successful. You know, most of the world is working from home right mm. now. So I'd say we did pretty well all in all. Yes. We'll see how <laughs> <laughs> Global IT support and especially your company did really well to make this uh, work. Uh, you talked just about rising awareness, awareness of the employees on the risks. In our little story narrative at the beginning, uh, there is a, like a fire drill. <laughs> the company uh, simulates an attack. Uh, is this common? Yeah, so I, I appreciate you asking this question. Actually, this subject is pretty near and dear to me. Uh, I do a lot of public speaking on what it takes to secure an organization. And as I mentioned before, most companies have put a lot of security features in place. Um, so uh, unfortunately, what has shifted is the attackers have realized that it's tough to get through a firewall and antivirus and all these other things we've put in place. 
But the busy people who are, at, who are now working from home, possibly juggling children at home, uh, unused to this working from home environment, they're on their 200th email message for the day, and they're not being super careful. So these hackers and attackers, these criminals, they're finding the easiest target is unfortunately the very busy people who can make mistakes, right? A firewall may not ever make an error, but humans do. There's always human error. Uh, so for us in security, we want to remind people that this is a common attack method these days. Uh, these hackers are trying everything they can to get you to click on the wrong thing and open the wrong program. So, you know, like I said, security is about layers. Um, and very early in my career, I, I learned this very the, a hard way. I uh, I had this belief that if I secured the outside world um, against the inside world and just protected those kind of gateway points, that that we would be secure. And I and unfortunately, I very learned a very big lesson that that was not true because all it took was one time to get through, and everything inside was suddenly got infected, yeah. and we had to touch a thousand computers by hand. So. That was not the second tech. That was much earlier in my, in my life, um, and I learned that that's not okay. We've got to we've got to protect the inside as well. We want to create as many layers as possible that makes sense in terms of ease of use and cost. Um, but back to the original question, yeah, it's pretty common these days now for us to simulate that attack in order to raise awareness. I, I can't tell you how many clients we go do this to, and suddenly. For the next several months, every email that's suspicious, they're sending to their IT group going, is this okay? Is this legitimate? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what we, I'd rather have them ask me a hundred times than click on one they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can recommend to raise uh, the awareness of your employees on these issues and maybe doing things like fire drill and these, uh, let's say, tests so that really everyone understand how important it is. and. Uh, uh, you talked about Wi-Fi and uh, what about the secure Wi-Fi or not so secure Wi-Fi in a remote work environment? Yeah, so we've seen wireless progress in security um, and each progression, unfortunately, was kind of due to the previous one getting cracked or, or hacked or attacked. And it's kind of this cat and mouse game where someone creates a new secure method of doing uh, wireless. And then, and we all adopt that, right? We make all of our equipment change and we all hopefully do security updates. Um, but then eventually someone comes out with another way to break that one. And part of this is due to that uh, Moore's law where the computing power is going up exponentially. So perhaps what would have taken, you know, months to crack a, a, cryptogra a cryptographic algorithm now only takes hours. Oh. And unfortunately, this, re this industry so far has been very reactive. Um, I don't believe I've seen, and I've been around a long time, you know, three decades, and I don't believe I've ever seen a progression in wireless that wasn't due, you know, predicated because of someone breaking the previous one. Mm -hmm. So scrambled to replace gear, upgrade existing gear, put on new firmware and adopt these new things. And, and unfortunately, what we see is often there's some old device that, that must be part of the co company culture still, company organization, that still has to be supported. So then they keep that insecure method um, and eventually that can, be, that can be cracked or broken or attacked. Oh, oh. So I know it's a pain, but I really have to suggest wired is the answer. You, you can't break into my wire unless you're physically in my home. But if I'm outside of your home, I can probably re get into your wireless. So I know I can't get up and move around and go outside without it. Um, but wireless is is subject to noise. Uh, only so many devices can attach at the same time. We have bandwidth challenges. So uh, again, I say it's a pain, but I always recommend going wired whenever possible. Wireless is just, it's a matter of time before the version we're using now will be cracked again. It's not nice to hear it, but maybe it's good to hear it <laughs> uh, that you say uh, wireless is nice and funny, but maybe okay for Netflix, but not for work. Correct. Ooh, bad. <laughs> I have to think. I have to think my own <laughs> chance. So uh, cloud, another let's say fancy aspect uh, everything is in the cloud it's wonderful we have uh, people on remote places and we can collaborate in the cloud what says it security to the cloud so I, i've actually had this conversation with many um it's, it's an excellent question first of all thank you for that question I, i've had that question brought up by many uh 
organizations. Typically, they're ones run by some older generation folks who are like unfamiliar with the cloud. They don't trust it. They feel like it may be less secure. And I, I don't want to set any false expectations, you know, that every platform, no matter what we're using, is going to be subject to exploitations and hacks. Um, but think about it this way. Uh, so first of all, the physical security, right? Um, in an environment where there's a server, like I've been in environments where the server was in the same closet with a hot water, he hot water heater mm -hmm. of companies that went under because there was a break-in and all equipment was stolen and they had nothing to go on. So Right now, in our traditional server environments, we're hopeful that our firewall is doing its job and that your IT administrator is doing the Windows updates and, and filling these holes that are being discovered. But how, how frequently is that happening, right? Is it frequently enough? And then is someone monitoring for malicious activities? Um, what about backups? Uh, when was the last time someone reviewed the backups? I mean, it's far too often we go to an environment and we see that the old server was being backed up, but not the new one. And the new one was the one that has the struggle. And now let's consider companies like Microsoft and Google and Amazon that are hosting these massive cloud environments. And these are in crazy secure facilities. I, I've ever been to a data center, but it takes a lot to get into one of these things. And they have redundant everything, right? Redundant power, redundant internet. Um, and they have the ability to shift resources. So if my server dies, they just, I never even know it. They just shift it to another, another a hardware platform. And I never even know. I don't, I don't miss a beat the whole time. They've got a massive security team that are monitoring because it's their reputation on the line, right? If they get hacked, maybe someone goes somewhere else. So they're going to throw a lot of resources at making sure things stay secure. And if an event does happen, they have massive resources they can throw at it to try to get it fixed. So the truth is nothing is secure forever, and we have to keep fixing these holes and patching things. And these companies are really, really good at that, and they do it timely. They're watching for these things because their reputation is on the line. So, so cloud can be, in some ways, even more secure than our on-premise server rooms. Okay, so you say professional data centers are good and fine? as they are professionally managed and they have much more resources on the issues we are talking here than you typically have maybe in a mid-sized company. So when, when we think about bringing the data from the data center to the remote places, uh, is there anything we have to watch out for the uh, YPN uh, facilities you talked about when we started, What's how to bring the information in a secure way to the remote workplace? That is definitely uh, an environment we see that progresses all the time. We are constantly trying to improve the connection, make it more secure. Um, the, the world has been pretty good about phasing out protocols that aren't supported or are insecure. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, VPN is is singularly the most secure method of transmission. We can create a connection between our uh, laptop, desktop, whatever we're using, and the facility we're connecting to over the internet. But because it's encrypted in our own private connection, it's not sub subject to being uh, viewed. No one can pull those packets out and, and see what's inside of them. So, so far, that's been a very secure and highly recommended method of transmitting any kind of data that should be secure. And it works very well. So, uh, should everyone who is working remote be connected via VPN? Um, I, there's a couple different scenarios here. So I would say if you are directly copying data or moving data from your computer at mm -hmm. home to environments, absolutely. There are other other also there are other alternatives where you can connect remotely to a computer, and you're not actually mm -hmm. uh, net you know network attached. Instead, you're just doing screen connections and mouse clicks. So in that case, that remote computer can't ever get any kind of data. It won't transmit data to you. You're not transmitting data to it. All you're doing is screen information. So that's also very secure and works very well. But as long maybe as you have mirrored your um, SharePoint on your local machine, then it would be preferable to have a VPN. 
Always. I learned so much. <laughs> we have to turn the security here, uh, IT security upside down, I guess, after this interview. <laughs> yeah, you hear about it and you think it's just maybe for big companies, but in the end, uh, everyone has to watch out for these things. Great. Yeah, unfortunately, companies are really our targets because yeah. they typically have less resources, fewer security methods in place. So they are often the targets these days. Uh, another aspect of securing uh, local machines is about face recognition or voice recognition. What do you think about these ideas or possibilities? I think they're great. Um, as I talked about before, this idea of ease of use and security being at opposite ends. So I want to layer on, I, I would I would layer on eight layers you had to log into before you got in just to make sure it was really you. But it would you would, it'd be so hard for you to work, you would, you would throw things at me and you would not like me very much. So instead, if I can use your face or I can use, uh, nowadays there are some Windows is using Bluetooth connections. So as I approach my mm -hmm. computer, um, it'll make a Bluetooth connection and it will unlock because it knows it's me. Mm -hmm. And if I step away, I've stepped away and it locks it. So yeah, I, I love the idea of anything that makes it easier for the end user um, to be to log in but still be secure. So anything like thumbprints, face ID, voice recognition, all that. It's not foolproof, right? If I was under duress, if there was someone mm -hmm. holding me physically, mm -hmm. you know, under in a place, it wouldn't secure me. But it is far better and far easier, which again we want. We want it to be easier for the end users, so they're going to use it and adopt it. That's definitely a plus. So I would say yes, 100%. So, so we should monitor your heartbeat rate if you are in a good condition. Put it again to my head before I do this. That's right. I like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have somewhere read. Uh, that of course a face or a thumb it's in the end just uh, data what about if someone is able to steal the data from a face recognition or a thumb recognition it, it's the same as any other secure uh, data right i can passwords usernames excuse me, logins and usernames are um, available. Like if someone has a, a breach, we see these breaches and those logins and passwords, they go on the dark web and, and these criminals, they'll sell them to other criminals. So that kind of information is always out there. Again, the answer is just layer them, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have multiple layers. So yeah, that could be also eventually probably that data will also be stolen and sold on it somewhere. Um, but if we have multiple layers, then hopefully it's very difficult to coordinate all those and make them work together. Yeah, but there is one slight difference. Maybe when my one fingerprint uh, is stolen, I can take another one, but I cannot switch my face when it's stolen. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. You, you're right. I can't. You can't recreate your face. We don't want you to. Your beautiful yeah. face. We don't want to change that. Um, you, you're right. So there'll probably be a point when we see that facial recognition will also, and Uber, it's also not just the data itself, but the method of transmission that we're using. So a lot of times, the protocols, the the methods that we use to transmit, they will have to change, and that's mm -hmm. very common. Mm -hmm. um, the methods with which transmit passwords nowadays are very different from what we used to use 20 years ago. So passwords can still be stolen, but now the transmission method is much harder to break and get into. Um, so you're right. There's a downside to every method we use. The idea is to try to stay ahead of these criminals. That's the best we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but especially, I, I think this idea of when one's uh, face is compromised in that way, that it's really difficult to replace. Maybe you, we should use maybe just a part of the face. Yeah, maybe a chart of just a pattern of, 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 of um, skin, a skin pattern or so, where you can say, okay, when this is compromised, we can just use uh, the tip of the nose. <laughs> right. or, or maybe the technology will improve and pretty soon we can read our retinas, which is even yeah. more, you know detailed in our thumbprints, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The technology tends to change when, like like wireless, the technology tends to improve when there's been a breach or a crack in some kind. So then someone yeah. smart comes out and says, I got a better way to do this. Yeah. Hopefully we keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. So it's still this catch me, play, run away and catch me. And uh, as, yeah. as, as it's done for yeah. all times, it, as it's done for all yeah. times. So... Um, 
when you think about these remote uh, work spaces and you says you said you, you mentioned it already what about the hardware problems yeah so this has become a real challenge right um we have a lot of remote msps a lot of remote uh, support people who can handle the majority of your tasks but if but if your monitor gets unplugged that's a real challenge right how do i how do i get there so a couple different options um i worked for a company who deployed an on-site um field technicians so there was a company whose job it is just to collect all these field technicians and review them and rate them and then you could go out and you could say all right i want that person to go to your house and help you with that now this pandemic has also created a challenge right maybe you don't want that person in your house mm -hmm. now it's a different dynamic though but let's assume you're you're open to the idea of having someone in your house i can contract that work out and i want to make sure it's someone we've vetted it's someone we know is is not a, a criminal themselves right so we do some vetting um, and these companies are very good about that they do vetting and, re and reviewing and you can see all the past reviews from all the work they've done and then choose the person you want to go out there that's one possible option the other one is if you're willing in a lot of cases i ask you to be my remote hands will you mm -hmm. please facetime or or teams mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. and you and show me what it looks like and i'm going to try to get you to walk mm -hmm. through the process mm -hmm or this cable it's it's painful um we got to be able to adapt to this environment that we're in right now uh so there are solutions to this problem uh when we do hear our figuring out about 2023 uh, quite a lot of our guests talk about workspace sharing that you are not working in your own home but that you go to a co-working space Uh, when I thought about our topic, I thought uh, this might be a place where you could be a little bit more secure from IT side, maybe, as it's a professional side. Yeah. And uh, maybe these uh, centers could be able to have someone who is doing the uh, physical side, maybe looking for a router, looking for a a uh, printer or a local machine where some whatever might happen. Uh, do you think that uh, co-working spaces are a piece in this solutions for the new working world in 2023? Yeah, I, I do. I, I we've seen a lot of success here in the United States with them. Um, they really they really took off. There's a lot of empty office space, particularly mm -hmm. now. That could be leveraged by people right to go somewhere to have as you said a secure infrastructure already created now you still want to make sure because there's a bunch of people there mm -hmm. you want to make sure that your 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 own private connections right your virtual private connection your vpn and other tools but yeah you've got the infrastructure in place and these companies go through a great deal of effort to make sure you have support to make sure that you get uh it's easy to connect to the conference room computer or the printer they they want to make sure it's easy otherwise you'll go somewhere else so they're really focused on supporting those people in those environments i think it'll be a great solution moving mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. as it uh, looks to me like a nice uh, mixture of a professional environment and uh, avoiding commuting and going to very expensive downtown office towers and um, yes i wouldn't be surprised if we really see much more of this in a quite near to, uh, quite, uh, in the next years like 2023 yeah. and shared cost too right i don't have to pay for a full office building i can i can have a small one and if i grow or expand i can get a couple next door and so we can kind of flex the way we do with the cloud resources so yeah i think this is a, a very upcoming uh i don't say technology but i definitely see us leveraging this more in the future Have you an idea what players might move into this uh, business opportunity? Are these the big? Now, when you you could think about I providing you the secure data spaces and maybe I provide working space too, or is it so different that maybe other players will go in this uh, business opportunity? I think we're going to see more of that because I think a lot of 
organizations are deciding that, hey, this work from home stuff, this works. People seem to be happier. Once they adjusted, people seem to be generally happier. As you mentioned, the commute time drops to zero. So all those big empty buildings are going to be available. And I could see a lot of places going, yeah, let's turn this into a shared space because we're not selling it as a one big unit. So instead, let's turn it into a shared environment and and, and share some of the costs among lots of people. Um, here in the States, we had a few different players already in the space. Uh, there's a building not far from me, great, huge thing. And, mm-hmm. and it was going so much built a second one. It was pre pandemic. Um, but this was like, we work, I think they've had some financial difficulties. Don't quote me on that. Um, but we definitely see some big players coming into this going, yeah, this is, this is the future. I wouldn't be surprised if some big players, uh, it's say maybe from the facility management side, as they are, uh, let's say, uh, ready to do this hardware side from this business, that I would be the one who could move into this space. Yes. When we now think for our listeners, uh, what would be your summary? What should we expect? in the next two to three years on the aspect of IT security, remote work, shared working spaces, clouds, what should we be be prepared for? Um, Well, we're definitely seeing a trend toward, as you mentioned, the cloud, right? That's a big one. Um, We're also seeing a trend toward people not going back to work. Uh, Major organizations like Google and Microsoft have said, yeah, just stay home. I I believe I saw, a memo from the president of Google, the CEO, and he said, probably October, we'll may, we may reassess, but for now, we may allow like one sixth of the staff back in kind of a rotating fashion, but this this working from home thing is, is great. And I, I think of parking and commuting, and frankly, the pollution is created by all that commuting, and this is je- definitely a trend I think we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going. Um, we've discovered that it works. It was tough, right, we had to adjust, but it, as, as you mentioned, Humans are resilient, and we're going to adapt, and we're going to realize that, man, this is this is kind of nice. I can I can stop talking to you, walk into my kitchen, and have lunch. I don't have to go drive somewhere to get food. I don't have, you know. So, uh, cloud computing is a big one, and we're going to see some companies that start to come up. We'll, like we're still pretty early in this, I think, but we're definitely going to see some methods or some solutions to securing your home environment. Right? How do I create a uh, maybe a subset of my work computer? or my home computer rather, that's just for work and it's secured from everybody else who uses my computer. I definitely think we're going to see solutions around that very soon. Um, what else are we going to see? Um, we've seen bandwidth increases uh, as people worked from home. All of a sudden, all the internet providers around the world, they strained under that additional load mm-hmm. all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see more um, high bandwidth, I think, deployments. Mm-hmm. Uh, 5G is one of those, right? We're going to see 5G being deployed out there. Um, that's a big one that could be a game changer for a lot of people, although it will take a long time. Um, that could potentially be one that's going to be a big, big game changer. I, I would love to go work at the park instead of sitting in my office all the time. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't like to go to the park uh, and, uh, yeah. instead of sitting inside? When you look back to the time of the pandemic and the changes you have made to your personal life, what are the things you would like to keep even after pandemic, uh, to increase your life quality, your life work balance. I, I like working from home. I'll, I, it, it, like I said, it took some ad- adopting. I have to share the, the dog duties with my wife now. <laughs> um, and and this, uh, you know, having children at home has been a struggle for a lot of people. But it can be a really game changer, particularly if they're at home. Who's going to watch the children if we're not at home, right? So we had some people who had to say, I have to go work from home. I have no choice in the matter. Mm-hmm. My children are home, mm-hmm. um, at least here in the States. So um, on the downside, I would say, unfortunately, you're probably going to see a lot of these criminals. They're going to keep leveraging this. Um, these bad guys, when when the world is in chaos, um, they don't have the moral <laughs> feelings that, that hopefully most of the people do. Um, and it bothers me that they do this, but they go after those people, right? They, they see this as an opportunity and it makes me want to fight those people even more. Um, but at a personal level, I run a big team. Um, I've seen a big insight on how challenging it is for those that, that rely on finding external certainty in their life. Um, so I kind of saw this split, this divide when this thing hit, where people that 
are more, I don't know, I want to say certain or secure inside themselves did pretty well. And there were people who kind of relied on the outside world and consistency and a pattern, and they did not do so well. And there was a lot of anxiousness around that. So hopefully we're going to see some more um, adjustment to people like that who are struggling at this time. Um, like I said, I got to see firsthand the stresses that it puts on a family with parents working from home and children at home. So for me personally, I learned a lot of tolerance and a great deal of patience. Um, I had to learn that not everyone's going to handle this the same. Not everyone will adapt to it as quickly. Um, and I hope that others find some room for tolerance understanding because everyone does deal with this differently. Sounds like a wonderful leadership lesson. <laughs> I think so. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a wonderful uh, summary from your side and thanks a lot. I have learned lots and tons of stuff about IT and I think I will accept your advice and change the one or the other bit here in our company. <laughs> and of course, we wish you and your team and your company good times ahead and many successes and nice growth. And thank you a lot, James, for being with us. It's my sincere honor to serve, and I hope your audience gets the value of it. And I hope you do make those changes in your security. Thanks very much for having me on the show. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> You've been listening to 2023. To get in touch with us with your comments or ideas, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just email hello at 20-23.earth. You can find even more material, including transcripts of our interviews, on our website at 20-23.earth. Please keep in mind, the content of this podcast is our opinion. We work hard to get our facts right. However, if you find something that can be corrected or improved, please email us at hello at 20-23.earth. If you haven't already done so, We'd be grateful if you would subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you happen to listen. Thanks for listening, stay safe, and there will be springtime in 2023.